Hello everyone, Marco here. So, you may have already heard about PFU HD. Um, officially, they describe it as a multi-level framework that infers 3D geometry of clothed humans at a high 1K image resolution in a pixel-aligned manner, retaining the details in the original inputs without any post-processing. Um, AskNK actually covers this tool nicely on his channel, um, so I encourage you to have a look at that if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, uh, this tool has been covered after that by a few other creators, but in this tutorial, we'll be trying something a little different. Instead of a photo, we'll use a quick digital painted sketch and feed that into PFUHD and see what we get. So I've got a sketch that we'll be working with, and as you can see, it's pretty rough and by no means uh, close to an actual photo of a clothed human. I mean, it's, it's, you wouldn't really call it photorealistic, but let's see what PFU HD can do with this and whether what we get is something we can work with. So to prepare the sketch, we just need to make sure to save it out with a transparent background and try to keep the shadows even. Um, the point is for it to read as a human form, and uh, if we can manage that, PFU HD should be able to extrapolate something worthwhile. At least, I uh, hope so. So the first thing we need to do is copy the page to Drive. You'll need to be logged in to your Drive account to do this. And when that's done, we'll connect to hosted runtime here on the upper right of the page. Okay, so I had to retry several times, but finally made it in. Now scrolling down, we'll hit play on this block of code. And after it runs, we'll get a folder called uh, PFU HD, where we'll find a subfolder called sample images. And this uh, is where we want to drop our sketch. Once uploaded, we'll right click on our image and copy path. And then in the configure input data block, we'll paste that path on both of the image path fields. We might also want to get rid of this line of text here. Okay, so after we can go up to the header and expand runtime, and then select Run After so that PFU HD processes our already uploaded image from the block we just edited. We'll give it some time to process, and when it's done, we'll find a new folder named Results in the PFU HD directory. Okay, so here's our resulting OBJ file, and all we need to do is hit right click, or just drop down here and download, and save to drive. Okay, so let's import the result into Blender, uh, I guess this is the moment of truth. And here it is. Oof. 
It appears our character has had an unfortunate encounter with a radioactive waste facility. But it came through regardless, uh, with, you know, proportions intact and the main shape is definitely there. So let's give him a little digital plastic surgery and see how far we can take this mesh. Okay, so first I'll use the auto mirror tool to symmetrize the mesh from the side that I think is easier to work on. And I'll apply that modifier and start sculpting over it. So here I use the mask operations to cut out any unwanted parts like the hands. Uh, and then I'll start moving some of the forms around with the grab brush tool. And then fill in the details with clay strips and draw sharp and then eventually smooth things over using the scrape brush uh, to get to a level that is ready for remeshing. You can also use the pose tool to uh, help straighten out some limbs um, or uh, move any like appendages uh, in any way. It can be really useful. Um, if you guys are interested in a more elaborate sculpting tutorial let me know in the comments uh, so that's the idea um, more or less we won't go over the entire sculpting process in this video but the end result will depend on the time you put in but uh, here's where i left it so at best i think it would make for a pretty decent cake topper but uh, this will do for our purposes um so at this point you can re-topologize it by hand or you can work with Blender's inbuilt remesher, uh, which is what, what I'm gonna show now. So using the uh, cleanup tool in the 3D print tab, I just make sure that the mesh is manifold first. And that will allow me to use the quad remesher, uh, like the quad remesh tool, the quad reflow remesh. Okay, so now this mesh should be manifold. I'll do a quick search for the quad reflow remesh. And apply. Here's our result. So as you can tell uh, there's some dirty geometry that I'll just go over and fix by hand. Again I, I, I won't really go over it in this tutorial uh, but um, this is the main idea basically. You just need to reapply auto mirror and clean up some of those uh, loose verts uh, and keep in mind that we're going to be um, refining the sculpt a little bit as soon as we uh, as soon as we have a, a mesh that we can um, we can work with if you want to try using other tools uh, I recommend instant meshes um, which is a cool free uh, application that will basically do the same thing but allow you to add guides for loops. Um, if you have access to ZBrush, you could use the Z Remesher tool uh, in the same way and uh, maybe do any additional sculpting from, from there as well. So my takeaway from this experiment is that while the mesh I got from P4HD was not ideal, it did take considerably less time to end up with a working mesh than if I had created uh, everything by hand um, and then just used my sketch as a reference. Um, but that was my opinion at least, um, and I think that uh, it's worth a try. Overall, I think P4HD is a cool way to combine the speed of uh, concepting characters in 2D and, and then working them over in 3D. It makes the whole 2D to 3D process much more, uh, much less tedious and much more iterable in my opinion. Uh, so 
that's it. In my next tutorial, I'll be piping a remeshed version of the sculpt to Mixemo and creating a short animated sequence. And here's a peek at the textured mesh. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.